Now moving past the BIOS, we're going to want to be able to gather hardware information inside the operating system. This allows us to troubleshoot existing peripheral devices as well as make changes or even simply view and see what configured hardware components we have at that point. So there's actually two common ways of viewing this hardware information. Hardware information is going to include components such as interrupt, addresses, and ports. Now the first option we're going to talk about are the various LS commands, such as LS dev, LS USB, LS mod, LS raid, and LS PCI. Now your LS dev is going to give you a breakdown of various IRQs and associated memory addresses. Your LS USB is going to give you information about any configured USB ports or any configured USB devices. Your LS mod is going to give you additional component information such as IRQs and individual modules that have been loaded to a system to support hardware. In addition, the LS RAID will only give you RAID information based on a specific drive input that is part of a RAID array. And finally, our LS PCI is going to give us integrated peripheral and additional peripheral information. Now aside from our LS commands, we also have the PROC virtual file system, which is basically a container that is created every time Linux boots up and will create various files and directories to house hardware file information. So let's take a quick look at some examples of this. Using the lsdev command, we can see an output of associated IRQs. For example, IDE1 has been enlisted as IRQ15 with the listed associated memory addresses, or IO addresses. So this is extremely beneficial to check and see if you have any IRQ conflicts that can often cause devices not to work. We also have our LS USB, which will give us our USB information. In addition, we have our LS mod, which is going to give us loaded modules, the names of them, the size of the module that's been loaded, as well as how we're using it. We also have our LS PCI, which is going to give us additional peripheral information, such as ISO bridges, IDE interfaces, available USB controllers, our video cards, for example, any Ethernet or audio controllers. So this is also a pretty valuable resource to locate hardware information. And finally, we're going to move on to our PROC file system. As you can see, by viewing the contents of the PROC file system, there's lots of hardware-based information here. Now, the real prevalent ones that we're interested in from a viewing hardware configuration aspect are any available DMA channels, IRQ channels, and any interrupts that are available to us. So for example, if we want to see available interrupts, we can use the less command. And it'll basically treat it as a text file and show us the current interrupts that have been configured. If we want to continue and view more in detailed information, we can also look at any IO ports that have been configured. And you can see your input-output configuration for each of your individual devices, including peripheral devices. Just a quick definition of a peripheral device is any non-essential device, such as a video card, a mouse, a keyboard. Non-peripheral devices include your processor, your RAM, and your motherboard. We've also talked a little bit about interrupts. We'll get into more of those a little bit later on. But additional hardware resources that are consumed by device configurations include input-output addresses, which are referencing addresses for the individual device. You also have memory addresses, which are storage locations inside of physical RAM that devices can utilize, as well as DMA channels. So if we want to take a look at our DMA configuration, 
We can see that here. And generally, DMA is only used by either your floppy drive and sometimes by your DMA controller. In this example, we're actually cascading it to a DMA4. So direct memory access or DMA channels are basically options that allow peripheral devices to communicate directly with physical RAM, basically reducing the overhead of physical RAM access.